Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shi Jun Wang. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to continue exploring these wonderful Paganini variations by Brahms. Uh, today, I am going to talk about the last seven variations uh, from variation 8 through 14 um, in book 2. Um, the uh, variation number 8 um, really, it's a very wonderful exercise or a wonderful uh, uh, variation to help us to build hand positions. Because within each group, we have three hand, hand positions. These overlapping octaves and then also those broken octaves. But then we need to do this in a split second. Again, each single one of them is not hard. Everyone can do this. But then to put this together and then accurately to switch our hand position to another position, that is difficult. So we have to make sure we practice. getting into a new position. Variation 9 is a good technique on the fourth finger. Um, many times when I teach students or who help my students to strengthen their technique on octaves, um, instead of playing always with with psalms and uh, fifth finger, I ask them to do the fifth finger alone. And that's a very, very good exercise to uh, reinforce the pinky being very, very supportive. And here, I think Brahms is thinking in the same way. Very, very uh, unusually, we have a fourth finger stand on its own. But here, there's no escape, so we have to make sure the fingertips are tight enough. A variation 10, um, I think it's him paying homage to Chopin. And, and why? I mean, this is probably not that difficult. It's a diminished uh, arpeggio. <laughs> But here, the second group, we have thumbs on the black key. And he grouped the notes in the way that we have to use the thumbs to, to make it rhythmically uh, exciting. So we cannot use second finger because then we have to switch again. So and why is this Chopin? Uh, uh, Chopin's invention. Um, well, Chopin had black, right, which basically freed our thumb to play any uh, black keys, which is a pretty rare phenomenon before uh, Chopin's uh, music. Um, but you see, also, this requires us to have a very flexible wrist, which is another specialty in Chopin's playing. So, to make sure our wrist is flexible enough to take this challenge. Um, variation 11, wonderful exercise for our second finger, right? We had four finger uh, uh, strings and here. And why is this difficult? Well, again, second finger, not very often to stand all the weight on one finger. And also, see here, both hands has a second, left hand has a third, while right hand has a fourth to jump. So this really practices us, us to really find the next position, to find the next interval, totally depend on the two second fingers. And they do different intervals at the same time. A variation 12, um, when somehow 
all the slow variations in this set is really so dear to me. <laughs> Chopin, right in the uh, the the Chopin uh, in Carnival uh, by Schumann, uh, it's really the same figuration. Um, but here we have we have this beautiful middle voice uh, implanted in in this uh, beginning. the melody goes but then on the inside you have a wonderful middle voice um, variation 13 um, again I think is Chopin related because he used um, a innovative fingering technique that Chopin invented which that is to change well, I wouldn't say Chopin invented, but Chopin really massively used. That is to change on the same note, to change the finger on the same note. So I have changed from four to five, four to five, from four to five. So although this is a quite slow variation, but you need to really move very very fast it's in the way um, it's almost like a duck syndrome right you, when you see a duck swimming on the pond it's very calm but then <laughs> underneath <laughs> it's swimming very very fast um, the last variation here variation 14 really compared to the last variation of book one this is not nearly as hard but then um, the the opening of this again practiced hand position and then we have to have a very firm hand position while it's moving and this this gets difficult because first of all it has a little bit uh, similar difficulty as this one because hands they overlap so here after you play you have to really get out of ways for so the other hand can play and also here in the left hand the first note a and e then we have to really place our wrist a little bit towards the left side but then the next one we have to change it to the right side so this rapid change of wrist really is uh, really is another way to make sure that our wrists are flexible enough another Chopin specialty <laughs> hands need to really have super super flexible wrist and the ending really um, the left hand has so much jumps and I barely look at my right hand I find them by just touching the key to the eyes then the pinky and then keep a firm octave position to make sure we successfully uh, can finish this one um, I know this is not a, a very typical uh, word with put it this way it's not a, a piano repertoire that you see every day in concerts 
um, it's <laughs> one of the hardest and people usually don't people usually stay away from this um, and I spend a lot of time and energy trying to figure out all the little technical uh, challenges um, I do this for my students uh, because I think if I can physically figure this out and I will explain this better to my students. I might not be able to play this um, when, when I'm uh, 60 years old, um, but then I can teach my students how, how it's done. Um, next time um, I will, um, since this is to this year 2020, is the Beethoven year, so I will uh, continue my channel with the Grand Pathetic Sonata and many friends and uh, audiences has requested uh, me to, to talk about Chopin Ballade and then another group of friends uh, asked me to do uh, the Transcendental Etudes by Liszt. I promise everyone I will eventually do all of them. I am currently studying all the four ballads and I'm also planning uh, after I do the series of all the ballads I will start to learn the transcendental etudes. I think I've known four or five of, from my college and high school years. Um, I not recently touched any of the transcendental etudes but I, again I will learn this for the sake of teaching better. Thank you so much for your support. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe my channel so that you will get the first time uh, uh, alert when I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week.